Hey, what's up? It's Aikid Mel. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. And I wanted to do kind of a two birds, one stone type of thing where I talk about this story briefly. Very brief. There's not much information out on this anyway, but there was a father that was killed in uh, Miami Dade two days ago, father of two. Um, it was a shooting. I, I'm guessing maybe targeted because the cousin, uh, she didn't want to be identified because she was afraid of retaliation. And so, um, I'm going to play this clip. We're going to watch a little bit of that. I just wanted to maybe put his name out, his picture out there. And what really kind of caught me about this one is that spot shotter technology or shot spotter. Sorry, spot <laughs> shot spotter. Say that fast three times. Shot spotter, shot spotter, shot spotter, shot spotter. It's not that hard. It's just me. Shot spotter technology prompted Miami Dade officers to respond to the shooting. Uh, Miami Dade fire personnel responded to the scene and declared hard dead. So we're going to watch this video clip briefly, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this whole shot spotter technology. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about this. I didn't even know this was a thing. I think this came out in 2019, uh, but there, we're going to watch the clip of this. And there's another clip about the pros and cons, this gunshot detection system. And then we're going to take a brief look at this website. Maybe you guys can tell me if you've ever heard of this or not. This is technology that police are using. It says shot spotter has met the challenge with our innovative technology technology developed over 20 years. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll look into this. We're, we're going to get into this now, but let's start with the first one. Information on a deadly shooting in Northwest Miami Dade. Detectives today identifying the victim as they continue to search for the shooter. Local 10's Leanne Motohon is live with our one and only exclusive Leanne. And I did speak with the victim's cousin who has some very sharp words for those who were there when her loved one died. She thinks that they know more than they're letting on. Andrew was a loving person. Ebony Travis remembers her cousin, Andrew Hart. Oh, I thought she didn't want to be identified. Hart's cousin who didn't want to be identified. Okay, I don't know, I guess she's... The 37-year-old father of two little girls was gunned down Monday evening along the 7100 block of Northwest 15th Court. Just to get the phone call yesterday that it was my cousin gone, I couldn't believe it. Miami-Dade police say gunshots were detected in the area using shot spotter technology just after five... I didn't even know that was a thing. It's incredible where technology is getting us. 5.30 p.m. When officers arrived to the area, they found Hart suffering from gunshot wounds. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue responded to the scene and pronounced him dead. And none of his friends know nothing. Damn. It was set up. Police say the shooter got away. That's what I was saying. It seems like it's targeted. Who knows? I mean, I don't know anything about this. Um... You know, rest in peace. At least the kids are okay. And I say that because these days, even, even kids are getting shot up with all kinds of stuff. A lot of these people these days, they don't even, you know, they don't care. They go, they take the kids out too. Uh, so it's unfortunate. I don't know his dealings because, you know, a lot of times with some people, there's a whole story behind things and you don't really know anything. Um, but really what caught my attention was the, the, the shot spotter thing. I was like, wow, I didn't know that was a thing. I was like, let's just do two things at once. Let's, let's say his name. You know, just I'll put a picture up. I mean, you guys seen the video and stuff. Just awareness because they're taking calls at the Miami County Crime Stoppers 305-471-8477. So, but that's something two people are going to have to start looking out for that, that sort of technology that's going on. Because uh, from what I heard, too, it's really fast. Like the detection and the alerting to police, it's a pretty fast system before officers could arrive. Right now, police do not have a description of the shooter, and Travis says she believes witnesses know more than they're telling. God sit high and he look low. So whoever know who did it to my cousin, you can't run or you can't hide, because my God above, he's going to find you. Police creating this flyer to distribute in hopes of drumming up leads in the case. You might well come out and say it's you. So there's no need to run. God's going to come with the answers to the question. So you might well come forward and just say, it's me. I'm here. Ebony Travis, not mincing words there. If you have any information on this case, you should go ahead and call the Miami-Dade Police Department. Their homicide unit is investigating this. You know, the thing about these situations, too, there, there's the whole, you know, people don't talk to the police. There's the whole no snitching thing, and that's why nobody's saying anything, you know. Um... 
and again, don't know his history, don't know the dealings and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so let's let's talk about a little bit the shot spotter technology. I want to play the video clip. I have these two video clips here. Let me flip it. Um, we can watch this together. You guys comment down below. You tell me, have you seen this? Do you know about this? That it's literally like they're putting microphones around the city. I wouldn't be surprised. Eventually, I'm pretty sure there probably is technology that's just. I mean, they already are listening and and recording and taking all our conversations, you know. So. Gun violence has plagued the city of Durham since the start of the new year. Now the city is looking into shot spotter technology. It's a story we first told you about on Friday. So this previous story with the father, that's two days ago. This uh, news clip is from 2019, February. CBS 17's Derek Lewis digging deeper into that technology to show you how it works and if it really makes an impact. Councilman Mark Anthony Middleton tells me the sound of gunshots makes families in Durham hide for their safety. Young people should not be having that conversation about getting in their bathtubs, gunfire breaks out. And if they are having it, for me as a, as a government official, as an elected official, that's a cue that we need to be putting all of our brain power, all of our intellect, all of our creativity into addressing this issue. Police are considering Shot Spotter. It's a series of microphones designed to detect the sound of a gunshot and pinpoint its location within 25 meters. Police are then alerted of the location almost instantly. Middleton just wants something done to reduce gun violence. Well, I'm not pushing this as the solution or even a solution. What I am pushing, however, is a conversation. Conversations are happening. I've learned Shot Spotter has helped reduce gun violence really? by 40% in one Chicago neighborhood. It enables the police to detect or to affect a fast and precise response to over 90% of gunfire incidents within the coverage area. And that has a strong deterrent impact and disrupts the gun violence. Phil Daly works for Shot Spotter. While the results are there, people still have concerns, like whether the device could pick up or nearby innocent conversations. When it comes mm, to the shot spotters, you see what I just said too, and I haven't watched these clips yet. Conversations, but they 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 really can already do that. Um, but this is kind of interesting. I also just wonder about, you know, with this technology when they're arriving to certain scenes or whatever. You know, what if the perpetrator's gone and the person that was just defending themselves and they have a gun on hand is there and police encounter them? Like, is, could this cause issues with that? But I'm all for technology. You know, as, as you know, hopefully they do the research and, and, and the data, but I'm all for, you know, um, law and order system. It's really important to understand that human voices do not trigger the sensors. Our system's designed to only trigger an alert when we detect a very loud, impulsive sound, one loud enough that it needs to trigger at least three sensors, some of which could be hundreds of yards away. This, And I wondered, what if they use silencers? Is silencers detectable? Probably not. I wonder. Most of these people are not using silencers, but... ...is why Middleton is pushing for more discussion. He's hoping it will lead to something that helps Durham reduce gun violence. Durham is not sequestered from the rest of the country. We have a, a gun culture in America. Uh, so it's not just about what's going on now. It's about ha having things in place uh, because of our growth. Middleton tells me he plans to talk about this tonight at Durham's city council meeting. I will be at. I mean, it seems like a positive thing. I don't know everything about it yet because the, the other aspect that I'm thinking too is like, um, you know, this could potentially save lives. Like what if there's a gunshot victim, somebody's just shot, drive by, whatever, police get there immediately. The car's already gone. There's somebody bleeding out. Then they can get medical attention immediately. Um, it sounds good. It sounds good. You guys tell me at the bottom. This is another video, three minutes long. Um, and it's, this talks about, and this was June, 2019. I think this technology came out in 2019. Um, this is the pros and cons. This is San Diego. The shot spotter system was launched. The only way police would know to respond to shots fired was if they happened to be in the area or from people calling 911 when the community doesn't call us and notify us that there's a situation going on either, either through 911 or the non-emergency line we won't know about it of course police want people to call 911 if they hear gunshots but with shot spotter they're notified within a minute it might have actually been 2007 sorry for the interruption i'm not quite exactly sure because there was something posted in 2007 about shotter there was a press release it seems like some places may have had it a little, might have had it a little bit earlier because here in Bridgeport, uh, it was announced in 2018. Bridgeport Police Department announced spot shot of technology was coming to the city. 
So and it depends. In certain places, it might have been different times that I came to the city. Of a gun being used. The system uses sensors mounted on light poles. They triangulate the sound, giving police a precise location of where the gunfire happened. Takeuchi says that allows police to get on scene quickly enough to preserve evidence, perhaps even to capture a shooter. City data was used to determine where to deploy ShotSpotter. That data showed most gunshot calls came from four neighborhoods in southeast San Diego, Valencia Park, Lincoln Park, O'Farrell, and Skyline Paradise Hills. But those neighborhoods are not necessarily supportive of ShotSpotter. That does not prevent it from hap a crime from happening, and it does not help you to solve a crime. Bishop Cornelius Bowser has been a community activist for years. He says the shot spotter system was installed with no community input. That did not and does not sit well with people in southeast San Diego. That's not the way you build trust. That's not the way that uh, you uh, 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 work with the community to keep. Hey, what do you guys think about this guy's thoughts on it? You know, um, I, it sounds like a good thing to me so far. The community safe. But Lieutenant Takeuchi says SDPD is very much focused on community policing, the building of trust with the people they police. Without community trust, you know, the part, it's very, very difficult for a department to operate. Um, and we recognize that, we understand that, we value that. Yeah, this has been out for a while. I'm saying 2016, 2017, it's just been rolled out. I don't know, Washington, D.C. might have been the first place. No, the technology was tested in Redwood Village in the neighborhood of California in April 1996. Through 2007, the manufacturer titled the device as having benefits, but locals were split as to its effective effectiveness. I'm reading this on uh, Wikipedia. So it, it seems like it's been coming out in little small phases. They've been testing it out since 2000, 2007, it seems, was like maybe, oh, no, 1996, sorry, was like the, the first one was in Redwood Village. And then it started splitting out to different places, it seems like. So it's something that I guess is gaining traction. But Bowser says there's another problem with ShotSpotter. The ShotSpotter company, and police for that matter, say the devices are only triggered by explosive sounds like gunfire. But there is skepticism in the community, some fearing a Big Brother type scenario where those devices could actually be listening to conversations. They're already, they're already listening to all the conversations. Every other day, every other week, Facebook has some sort of leak. They got all our passwords. Every other th thing is a, a credit card, a credit bureau, one of these people, millions and millions of people. Just the other day, Barrow County schools, they were supposedly hacked, and they, they didn't believe the hack. There was these hackers that were holding them for ransom, and um, these people were like, oh, no, uh... Uh, the, the, the Broward County people or whatever for that school, they were just saying, oh, no, they don't believe it's real. They don't think they don't they weren't taking it seriously. And so the hacker said, OK, they just recently dropped thousands and thousands and thousands of people's information online. Now, they're trying to say that it's not personal information. I, I don't believe that because I, I think I read another article that's claiming that there actually was some privacy uh, of information that was dropped. And so th this stuff, as far as listening to commerce, they've, they've all already tapped in. They are selling our information. The things that if you or I were to put somebody's address out that wasn't public information, like in the news thing or for some public reason, the things that we could do, a regular citizens uh, that we can't do, that we'll get could get in trouble for, it could be a crime. They have companies selling and doing it legally uh, selling our information to anybody else, whoever wants to sign up to an account and pay a monthly fee, you know? So everything's already out there. Takeuchi says the system does not capture conversations. It's looking for those specific sound waves, and when those sound waves trigger the system, that's when the recording occurs. The city is in the middle of a four-year, million-dollar contract with ShotSpotter. Man, Bowser says it's money. a waste of money. That Ooh. million dollars could be going to something that's way more effective. And yeah, you should send it to the schools that are just going to lose it, and it's going to go in their pockets anyway. <laughs> this does not help build community trust and accountability. Takeuchi disagrees. If gunfire were to erupt and we get to a location where no 911 calls are received and there is an individual that's been shot and we're able to render first aid. And right, I just said to, that. Um, save that person's life. I think the system has paid for itself. One more thing to consider. In the area where ShotSpotter is now deployed, there were an average of four murders a year in the years leading up to its installation. Over the last two and a half years, there haven't been any. 
Whether that has anything to do with ShotSpotter is anyone's guess. John Carroll, Cape PBS. So, I don't know. I'm not an advocate, though. Maybe they should send me a... It'd be nice to have a sponsor. Sponsor me. Send me a sponsor. Send me some money. Uh, say that joking. Not really. Kind of. I'm actually kind of serious. So, this is the website, and these are the pictures depicting how this gunshot spotter technology works. And it's basically... It looks like they have microphones slash sensors, and it triangulates the person's location. Gun is fired. The sound of a muzzle blast radiates outward. Gunshot is detected and located. Acoustic sensors are triggered by the impulsive sound. The sound is classified as a gunshot using artificial intelligence and triangulation determines the precise location. Gunshot is reviewed. The data is relayed to the shot spotter incident review center. So, okay, so they have a whole center and stuff where they're monitoring all this stuff. And then from there, they see where analysis quickly, analysts quickly audit the data and publish confirmed gunshots to police. Alerts are sent to dispatch centers and patrol officers, smartphones, and MDTs for immediate response. The entire process takes less than 60 seconds. Damn. Anyway, thank you guys. Again, this probably could have been a live stream that I could have done, but I, I'm trying to be super productive today and get a lot done. Uh, and so thank you for the support. Please hit the like, subscribe, turn on the bell, notifications, all notifications. Take care of yourselves and peace.